to present there the perspective of the crisis and the experience and consequences from the perspective of credit insurance. We've talked about crisis quite a lot uh, today, also in previous years. So it's also the crisis through the prisma of the, the credit insurance, meaning crisis, the experience of our own clients. Uh, on COFAS ratings, these are available on, on internet. So we have basically a country rating, uh, sector rating and business climate rating. The difference between standard rating on top of having okay, macroeconomics elements, etc., is that we add this direct payment experience from our clients when they deal on a credit basis. So basically you got investment gradings, A1, 2, 3, 4, and then the lower you go, the higher the impact of the economical, political environment on capacity of payment of the companies. This crisis has been said also is the first time we have a globalization crisis, very significant drop with all countries falling at the same time and very sharply, mainly at Lehman, um, during Le Lehman uh, bankruptcy and with a very strong impact also on the overall demand and volume of um, trade. So this crisis, as has been said already before, has been rather exceptional. So we have normally cycles in economic crisis, so we were expecting a crisis, but not as sharp or as high, and hence the, the, the difficulty we've seen in the past two years and now we are basically now resuming end of the crisis and going back to more normal level. But as it's been said this morning, what has been lost in the meantime would probably take quite a long time to recover, up to five years or more in Europe, for instance. And I said, okay, cycles are, are normal in the economy. So again, that crisis came more or less when it should have came, maybe a little earlier. What was not expected was the uh, size of that crisis. So, and if you compare to previous cycles we had in the past 30, 40 years, with a crisis every six years, on average seven years, uh, what you see on those graphs, the, the, bar, the red bars is economic growth. The higher the economic growth, the lower the payment incident and difficulty, that's the blue line. And conversely, the lower the economic growth or decrease, uh, the higher the payment incidence and payment default from our clients. Now we consider, uh, that may be answering the question of uh, Tom starting this uh, conference this morning, is the crisis over? On the perspective of the credit insurer, yes, the crisis is over. We have seen a significant drop now in payment incidence after two years, more credit control, and now the growth coming back. But that doesn't mean that, economically speaking, we may are be totally out of the crisis, or at least the recovery, even if this growth is back, may be slower than expected, especially in developed countries. So what we see there is that basically this growth is mainly, again, coming from emerging countries, uh, and with uh, the industrialized countries remaining quite far behind. The main issue for the developed countries is that the Private demand would remain quite weak. We see now this demand has been said several times already, picking up in the US, uh, but for Europe, it would definitely remain behind. So the salvation eventually have to come from other markets or emerging markets, but at the same time, we may still have some new bubbles coming, like public debt, they would say may burst or has burst now, at least in Europe. Um, credit. Um, is absorbing, so I think it, it's better on that side, especially, again, you have credit available. We discussed quite a lot about credit availability in China, real estate, uh, stock markets, uh, the recent uh, rallies, uh, ups and downs in, uh, in recent weeks uh, has been shown that this volatility is still there. Overcapacity is probably still developing in China exchange rate and commodities, okay, with probably a higher increase because there's still strong demand again from Asia and China. So we may have a further amplification of bubble there. How does this translate going through different countries? So there, United States and Japan. The red line is the world average. This is our payment incident index. So it's a combination between frequency and volume of payment we receive from our clients. 
Today you see even Japan, which is traditionally good payer, low default uh, level, has got, got to that peak uh, during the, the peak of the crisis after the Lehman failure, but is progressively going down, let's say back, but not yet back to normal. So risks are still there, even if it's improving significantly. The US also had a very strong increase. Basically, they started, I think, the crisis for us with a high level of, of um, claims made a, a already in, in the first part, uh, in, in 2008, uh, in the first part of 2008, but now going back to much better level and quickly improving also with a strong, stronger economic growth in the US compared to other parts of the world, uh, in the developed world, and especially uh, Europe. There in Europe, we have a, a, an expectation of 0.8% growth. That probably would have to be revised downward. This has also been said this morning by Luca. Uh, probably more in the 0.5 uh, range. Uh, but that means that because of low growth there, uh, low consumption levels, uh, more uncertainty on unemployment, because this kind of growth doesn't prevent job the, the destruction. Uh, so the risk of uh, payment incident remains relatively high in, in Europe compared to other parts of the world, like notably emerging countries where with strong economic growth we see much better payment experience. Obviously, a few countries, uh, the so-called pigs, even if I don't like uh, talking about this from those countries, uh, still would remain in negative territory for, for the time being, especially in 2010, probably also in 2011 with a significant uh, payment risk, though maybe different in some countries because of other elements like a grey economy eventually. Payment incidents, so obviously there uh, re some countries in southern Europe, Italy, Spain, uh, even Port of Greece to some extent have shown very strong payment default and payment incident is improving also quite fast, but remaining above the world average, so relatively high pregnancy in terms of risk, payment of risk in those countries. Where other parts uh, of England uh, had uh, basically had a very sharp increase, mainly because of real estate crisis at the beginning of the crisis, now all going back to more normal average level, while France and Germany are still doing quite well uh, and reasonably low level of claims despite a relatively strong level of bankruptcies that we have seen in 2009. But the, the improvement is much more significant since the second last quarter of 2009 and the first quarter of 2010. So this translates into uh, quite a number of ratings for those countries being now positively oriented. Again, because of the debt crisis, okay, we have regular review on, on those ratings, and, and maybe some of those uh, economies where we are on a positive watch could go and stay where they are rather than being on positive level in, in the coming weeks or months. Uh, at the bottom, we still have, again, the, the countries most affected by the debt crisis, uh, and which are still on negative trend, and probably uh, could go down further uh, rather than being staying on, on negative watch only. Emerging economies, okay, uh, are strongly resilient. They've all been affected by the crisis. There has been some significant decrease in economic growth uh, that could have triggered some payment incident. Uh, Russia has been very strongly affected, and we have seen loads of payment default still there, by the way. Uh, despite a very strong uh, economic rebound expected in, in 2010. But the problem is eventually in those countries about recourse in case of non-payment, legal systems, uh, so still create some difficulty. So you have big markets, but you also have significant risk, which are not non-payment risk as such. The money is there, but it's a general practice in terms of payment and recourse available if you need to get your money back. I will accelerate a little bit. We talk a lot about Chinese loans, uh, so they have been very good to sustain the recovery in 2009, a strong uh, increase in, in bank loans. Now it's going down again. So the question we may have, this has been discussed a little bit during the day, is whether we could have more non-performing loans coming, 
This is not impossible. One of the reasons is we're not absolutely sure that this law 